neighbor has music going but uh these are cucumbers these are some onions more cucumbers and onions except this one here which is an okra coming through here are our various peppers i've got serrano banana pepper uh purple bell pepper and something else i don't remember but it's fine i'll know what it is when it turns into a pepper oh giant marconi giant marconi that's what it was this bed is full of kohlrabi it is succession planted uh we'll see if i actually get kohlrabi bulbs out of it because it's a little bit late in the season for kohlrabi they're a colder weather plant here is some of my tomatoes. And as you can see, a couple of them have fruit already. That's San Marzano. And that is a uh, yellow bell, not yellow bell pepper, yellow pear tomato. Uh, this one back here is a Mr. Stripey. And then this small one right here is a bumblebee tomato, which is a cherry tomato. These are potatoes. Uh, they came from scraps that were tossed out over the winter, and then when I came out to start doing stuff in the spring, they were growing, so we just let them grow. That is year two leeks that I'm going to get seeds out of. More tomatoes. Uh, this is a mix of Belgian Giant, Sweet, black cherry tomatoes and a uh, purple Cherokee. Back here, these bushy ones are blue like bush beans, which are basically like green beans. These two tomatoes back here were volunteer tomatoes. So this one's been eaten up a little bit, which kind of sucks. So yeah, I don't know what those are. They were just growing, so I put them in the bed. There'll be a surprise. Coming out of the slowly being built up main garden area. Eventually, we plan to have like a little fence and a little area to just hang out back here where we don't have to worry about the dogs. Here's Bowser. Peach is laying over there, hoping that I will throw the ball for her. Hi, son. I'm not going to throw the ball. I'm not throwing the ball. Drop it. Good boy. Over here, we have various pole and runner beans. Uh, they are set up to start growing up the tree because I like the way that looked last year. They are not parasitic, so you don't have to worry about them strangling the tree out or anything. Um, this is red vein sorrel, which is a leafy green, basically. Um, it's slightly sour. Asparagus. There used to be garlic in there, but there's not garlic in there anymore. It's just asparagus. Coming over. Sorry for all the noise. This is a thornless blackberry. In here, we've got mums. And then maybe Schwarzenbeeren. I'm not exactly sure if that's what these are. Uh, they are being eaten alive. So if they are, that's unfortunate because this is the second year I've tried to grow them and I thought they were dead and then they weren't dead, so. This is a mystery plant. I think, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's growing out of like a weird bulb thing. And I had it planted before and I'm thinking maybe it's uh, charred. It might be charred, but we'll find out. This here is for Scythia. Uh, we bought it this year, so it's not quite bushed out yet. It was just a stick. 
my uh, bunching green onions right there. More green onions. So this bed I just planted this morning and it's got watermelon in it and it's got garlic in it. And the garlic used to be up front, but I transplanted it to the back. So we'll see if that lives. That's just kind of like a, well, I was going to let it die anyway. So I've got space, might as well put it in there. Over here, this is my zucchini. These two are golden zucchini. These ones are black beauty zucchini. These are also black beauty, but they were planted later. Um, there is in the back some asparagus that's planted, like asparagus crowns that are planted, but I forgot about them in the garage, so they might be dead. If they're not dead, great, they'll grow eventually. Uh, if they are dead, well, they'll add organic matter to the soil. <laughs> This one here is my bay leaf tree. This is the original tree, so it's old. It's like two year old piece right here. Um, but it's got new growth on it. So I'm excited for that. Uh, let me bring you around up to the deck. Okay, up on the deck here, this is the herb tower is what I call it. Sorry, moving some stuff out of the way. So I've got purple basil, sweet Italian basil, Thai basil, and then a variegated basil here. And then down here, I think, yeah, this is hyssop or hyssop. I don't actually know how it's pronounced. Um, this is thyme. Is this the, yeah, this is lemon thyme and it smells amazing. Here is some, uh, dill. Back here is a variegated thyme plant. I really like variegated plants. Uh, and then this is a pineapple sage. It smells like bubble gum. There's more thyme back there. And then on the other side is some uh, parsley, and below the parsley is actually catnip that just carried over from last year. So over here I've got, this was leafy greens. Uh, it's a little hot for leafy greens now, they're all kind of bolting. So I'm just letting them go for right now until I have something to replace them with. But this is a variegated sage plant. And then these two, are black nasturtiums. So they just recently got planted like four or five days ago. Uh, they were in one pot and I separated them out because it was actually two plants. So the leaves of this actually taste like black pepper, which is kind of neat. Uh, this is, it's a type of herb. Scented geranium, so it's a variegated mint rose. And this little thing right here, I think, is marigold. Um, it's from flowers that we had planted last year that ended up getting mixed into the soil. Like, there's some right there, too. Peach Bowser! So, there's one that's up front that I'll show you that's already growing. Come on, up the stairs. Inside. Good dogs. Uh, over here is my strawberries. It's three different kinds. Don't ask me what kinds. They make white flowers and pink flowers. And more asparagus. It is so freaking tall. Like, that asparagus is hella tall compared to me. If it got thicker, I'd call it a little tree, but it doesn't get very thick. So coming out to the side yard, we have our sunchokes, which are doing really, really well. These are leftover sunchokes from the big bed that I planted that just didn't fit in that bed at the time. Um, so I just, I put them in a pot of dirt that was empty and they're doing great. 
Over here is two pots. These pots have uh, spring bulbs in them. They have already come up, flowered, done their thing, and they've died back. Um, I just kind of leave that pot. This is the third year we've had it, and it comes back every year, so. These, I believe, are Sweet William. Um, they are a second year flower. It took two years for them to bloom, but they are very pretty. Along the side here, we are setting up a trellis for grapes. Uh, it's not completely in yet, but on each of these poles, there's going to be a grape plant because I have cloned my grape that I have. This one was planted last year. Um, it will eventually come out of that pot because I'm going to have around where the pot area is. I'm going to make a garden liner out of some trees that we cut down. Um, so that'll be really neat once I get it there. There's some extra grapes. They are, they are growing. I know they just look like sticks, but that's what grapes look like in their first year when they've been propagated. Um, all of them have roots. A couple of them have leaves now. That one is one that really took off that was from that same group over there. So I'll get those planted. Here is our grape. This is the third year for our Concord grape, our big one. And as you can see, there are so many grapes on it. I am very excited. This is, uh, again, in the front here we had spring bulbs. In the back are fall bulbs. Uh, the back is actually saffron crocus. So that should start popping up again towards the end of July, August, I think. This big mess is bee balm. Uh, I did not expect it to grow this tall. It is literally the size of a small child. I don't remember what this is called, but it's pretty. It has pretty yellow flowers and pretty like purpley black foliage. And in the back here, this is a uh, swamp milkweed, which is native to Virginia. And we planted it because we get a lot of butterflies. So hopefully if we get any monarch butterflies, they can have their caterpillars there and that'll be neat. Our big bush that I haven't trimmed. So I made this bed this morning. Uh, the the uh, current outside of the bed with the brick is going to be something else eventually. But I finally planted my rosemary. This is a, another leek that's on its second year, so it's going to give me some, some seeds, I hope. Uh, down there is a Alaska mix nasturtium. So it makes like purple, or I'm sorry, not purple, orange and yellow flowers. But that one also tastes like pepper, the leaves do, if you put them in like a a salad or something. And then here's one of those mystery flowers. I'm not very good at identifying flowers, so I'm actually not sure what it is. Like it reminds me of the marigolds that we had, but it might also be something else because we had a bunch of different annual flowers last year. This is a peony. The flowers on it have already kind of wilted away. They got pretty beat up in a storm last week. And planted in with the peony is a bunch of salvia. It's called Rhea salvia and it makes purple flowers. This is the hanging pot that my wife picked out. Very cute. I like the colors in it. And then this bed was, uh, I did not expect it to get this full of flowers. I only planted like 10 things of flowers in there and it just expanded as the spring went on. And there's kale right there that's just growing from last year. We thought it was dead and then it wasn't anymore. Uh, and in the little pot is mountain mint. Camera died last time, uh, so... I think I was talking about this bed. So up front here we've got a bunch of uh, annual and perennial mix. Just pretty things that I wanted in here. Um, the only thing that's really in here that's quote unquote not just pretty is chamomile. And it's this tiny little mound down here. Um, over there at the end is some flocks. I've got a couple different colors right there. 
a mix of mounding and creeping flocks because, well, I really like flocks. In the back, this bed is full of native plants. There's yarrow in the back, echinacea, which is coneflower, in the middle there. Um, I don't actually remember what these ones up front are because we got them from the Department of Wildlife Resources and the lady told me what they were, but they didn't have labels and I don't remember anymore, but I know that they are native plants. Um, and that one in the back, I also don't remember the name of. It's got a tag. Hold on. Let me step over here. Uh... Coreopsis, apparently, which was also in the native section at the nursery. So these are a bunch of flowering plants that we put out for the pollinators. Um, I think I talked about the peony and the salvia back there and our little pot of petunias that my wife got that is really freaking pretty. These ones especially, these spotted ones, um, I forget what they're called. It's something about like starry sky or something like that. I really like that a lot. <laughs> this section over here that's empty, uh, it's got some garlic in it, but that's not something that I'm like growing to harvest. If it grows great, I'll harvest it. If it doesn't, eh. Um, I basically ran out of cardboard to cover that half of the garden bed to prevent weeds from growing up. So once I have cardboard, that half will get covered and we'll plant something in there, probably more native plants. Uh, right here, these are actually two tiny little azalea bushes. And they're not planted, they're in pots. They're actually going to be planted probably out there by that pole because I am going to use them to help kill off the trunk of a mimosa tree that we cut down last year that has started to grow back. These are bulbs. Um, they are fall blooming bulbs except for those ones back there which are apparently summer blooming bulbs. They're very pretty. Um, my wife got those for me, the black and white ones, because I have a, uh, a like of vibrantly colored flowers like that where it's just, oh, look at the, look at the contrast kind of thing. I guess it's not vibrant, it's just contrast. This here is raspberries. Uh, this pot I've had for four years now. Um, we don't get a lot of raspberries off of it because of the birds, uh, but in the fall I intend on getting it into the ground. It's actually going to be in this bed right here that currently has uh, sweet pie pumpkins. Sugar, I think sugar pie pumpkin is the, is the variety. So once that has gone a little bit more dormant, it'll be transplanted into this bed. The bed is small right now. It is actually going to be widened out to encompass all of that area because that's how big the bed was originally. Um, but I didn't need it that big for the pumpkins. So I didn't make it that big for the pumpkins. That is a mum, even though it's in a blueberry pot. Uh, it is left over from last year when I had a couple mum plants for the fall and they got left out over winter and two of them survived. So this one and then the one in the back. Here are my blueberry bushes. So I've got four of them here. They are absolutely covered in blueberries and I am very excited. I'm going to put up some bird netting around them here soon because they're going to start ripening in the next couple of weeks. Um, all four bushes have blueberries on them. This is the oldest bush. We've had this one for three years? Three years? Four years? This might be its fourth year. Um, the others are all two to three years old, so they're not as big. That right there is a Nordescarmus uh, melon. I think that's how it's pronounced. It's basically kind of like a musk melon, a cantaloupe. And then this bed in the back here, in the corner I've got a banana melon because it was at a plant sale that I went to this past month and uh, I've never had a banana melon, so I'm gonna grow some. Uh, all of these nice, tall, beautiful plants, these are all sunchokes or Jerusalem artichokes. They are starting to get 
little bugs which just fell off so that's good uh, little bugs on them which I think are some kind of aphid we've been blasting them off with water and I have some uh, uh, cedar oil that can be spritzed onto it like watered down and spritzed onto it that is supposed to to damage them so that they don't continue to grow um, down here this right here is rhubarb and when I was doing research on sunchokes, they basically said that rhubarb was a pretty good companion plant for them. And since I don't have that much garden space, or at least not as much garden space as I would like, I am doing my best to try and do companion planting as often as I can. Um, I'm a little bit constrained by the fact that most of the seedlings I started got killed off by a couple late frosts. Like there were four late frosts that weren't expected and all of my seedlings got killed. Oh, somebody dug up one of the sun chokes and ate it. Great, that means they know that there's food in this bed so I'll have to keep a better eye on it. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is a Jerusalem artichoke. This one is uh, partially eaten, probably by a squirrel. Oh, anyway, as I was saying, we had four late frosts that killed off a lot of the seedlings that I started, which was unfortunate because I had a bunch of different varieties of tomato, had a bunch of different peppers. I had a, a kind of pepper that you can't actually buy started here. So, and it's a little too late to start them now, so I'm going to have to just deal with them not, not being available. Um... But next year I'll have a greenhouse to put them in to help keep them safe. So next year I should have a better variety of stuff. I am really excited for this. This is bee balm. And it is going to flower soon. And there's so much of it and we're going to have so many pretty flowers. That'll be so cool. Uh, over here... We have a bush. It makes pink flowers. It is a native plant to Virginia. It's the miniature mountain laurel. I left the tag on so I'd know what it was. Um, it's already made one flush of pink flowers and they were very pretty. And I am very excited to see more flowers on it. This is my hydrangeas that we got for my wife. They are one of her favorite flowers. And they are starting to put on blooms. I just limed it, so hopefully they'll be pink. <laughs> These two are two different ground cover flowers. They both have blue in them. They are in with a Italian cypress tree, I think is what it was. I don't know. I got it over the winter because I wanted to have a little Christmas tree looking thing on the porch. And uh, it's it's surviving. So I put it <laughs> in a big pot. And I'm going to let it grow. Up here we've got a bunch of irises and uh, alliums planted. My, my mini rose bush here, that's a mix of various colored miniature tea roses and a red drift rose that actually looks more pink than red. And then of course we've got more of these, uh, I think, petunias. I forget what they're called. We've got more of those up front because they were on the were dying shelf at the store. So I bought them and undyed them. And that is the garden currently. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye.